My name's Justin Cooper. Oh, I'm Jason Cooper. We're brothers. <laughs> In case you couldn't tell. This guy Brecco was on Rogan, breaking down folic acid and vitamin supplementation. Yeah, he said a lot of things that made me stop and be like, whoa, if that, is that true? <laughs> like, like, you just hear people say things, and it's like, you yeah. know, you have that question in your head. Is that, is that true? Is that really the case? And you gotta, you gotta do a little deep dive yourself. Yeah, so we did that, because we wanted to know more. Maybe you want to know more, too. We've got some clips from the show. You want to hit it? Yeah, let's start with the first clip. Mm, that, that's why I say I think everybody at once in their lifetime should do a genetic methylation test. And the reason for that is that you do this test once in your lifetime. You never have to repeat it. The genes you're born with are the genes you die with. And based on, there's five major genes of methylation. Based on how these five genes are working or not, you supplement for their deficiency. So, for example, one of the most common gene mutations in the world is called the MTHFR. It's called the motherfucker gene. <laughs> Stands for methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, but we call it the motherfucker sure. gene. This gene is estimated to be compromised in somewhere between 40 and 60 percent, depending on the study. 40 to 60 percent of the population has. It's an enzyme. It ended in ACE. That yeah. long ass name. That means it's an enzyme. It breaks but, something down. Yes. And. Basically half the people, he said 40 to 60 percent, will say half of us have this gene where we can't break down folic acid specifically. He didn't, did he mention that yet? He didn't mention it in this clip, but it's the breakdown of folic acid into its like active component, which is methylfolate, which I think he's going to get into right. as well. But like, yeah, okay, so we're not doing that. Right. Some, a lot of people, half of us... Half of us aren't doing that. Can't do that. Yeah. Don't feel bad if you can't break it down. We're here to help. This gene mutation. And what this gene mutation does is it interrupts the ability to convert folic acid into the usable form called methylfolate. And while that might not sound like a big deal until you realize that folic acid is the most prevalent nutrient in the human diet. Folic acid, by the way, is an entirely man-made chemical. That's a crazy you can't claim. Find folic. We've been what is the type of stuff? I hear that. Does that even <laughs> make sense? That's why I'm glad we're listening to yeah. this again. It's I'm the pretty... most prevalent nutrient in the human diet? I'm pretty sure that's what, that's he, what he just, just said. said. Mr. Brecker, back it up 10 seconds. And while that might not sound like a big deal, until you realize that folic acid is the most prevalent nutrient in the human diet. Most folic acid, nutrient. by the way, is an entirely man-made chemical. You can't find folic. We've been we've been lied to about folic acid. I mean, it's it's entirely man-made and synthetic. You can't find folic acid anywhere on the surface of the earth. It does not occur naturally in nature. Folate does, but we make folate. folic acid in a lab. Folate's in a lot of vegetables. And then what we've done right. since 1993 folate. is we've sprayed all of our grains, all white flour, all white rice, all white bread, and grains of any kind are sprayed with this chemical folic acid. It's enriched. called fortified or enriched. So when you when you spin a box of crackers around, it says fortified yeah. whole wheat flour or enriched bleached white flour. Oh, that's good, right? That means it's been sprayed with folic acid. Like well, forty four percent of the population can't convert that into the usable nutrient. Why do they spray it with folic acid? Well, so it's one of those things where it seems like they're trying to do good. Yeah, it sounds like, like it's all right. Good. Yeah, we're gonna enrich. Yeah. These foods, Pretty right, safety. they're devoid of, of nutrients. We're going to enrich them with nutrients. Yeah. But instead of using a natural nutrient that's, you know, naturally occurring and that our body knows about and can break down, right. they do a chemical version yeah. that they created. They synthesized in a lab. I feel like it's pro like folic acid is probably a byproduct of some other company that was then like, hey, could you guys use this and do something with it? Yeah. And then they're making money on it too. I don't know. That's pure yeah, speculation. That is, that we, right. we 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 didn't we couldn't get that deep in our research that's for it. But that's that's yeah. like next uh, you know next episode. But right. let's uh, make sure everybody's getting their folic acid because it is good for well folate. You is need good folate. For you. you need right. folate. Does it so have to be folic acid? Let's use folic acid. It's probably easier. It's probably cheaper to to make. Whatever. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. We can just spray. We'll spray all the grains wheat, rice, with this stuff. Everyone gets it. So that everybody gets it.
But then they leave out, I don't know when they did that, maybe they didn't know, but they're leaving out that half people can't break that down? Yes. Half the people don't produce the enzyme that breaks that down. But do they know that, though, at the time? I don't know. Do they know in that in 98? <laughs> do they know? They don't. There's no Probably way they not. know that. They find out later that it's like, oh. But then it's impossible for them to go back because they're so bad at, like... Yeah. And I don't know who they is either because then it's right. not even an individual person. Right. It's like the organization that made the call, oh, we're going to spray this on everybody's food because it seems like a positive thing. But then when it comes out and it's like, hey, actually now we know half the people in the world can't digest this or they can't yeah. break it down. It's actually harmful to them. And it could be harmful to them. They don't go back. They never go back they and say back. like, oh, you know that thing that we did to everybody? Turns out it was probably bad for at least half of you. So, like, my bad. Let's stop doing this. No. They never take steps back like that. No, no, no. It's like that, that person you know who's just, like, kind of a dick. And it's just like, no, I was never wrong. Right. Not I admitting wrong it. about that. No. No, 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 no. I, that was someone else's fault. That wasn't me. <laughs> that wasn't me. I wasn't even there. It was this and this. Now, you going to stop, though? Are you going to stop being a dick? You gotta no. stop spraying the folic You gotta acid. admit it in order to be able to stop it. Right. Does it sound like something else? Does it sound familiar? In, in the way that they have handled maybe a certain... I don't know if we can say that world word. ...world-changing situation <laughs> recently? <laughs> hmm. Here's the thing everyone should fucking do, and don't question it. Yeah. Because it's probably gonna help. Yeah, it... Oh, yeah. A few months later, it turns out... Oh, it's not great for everybody. Maybe it's not all that. Maybe it's helpful for some. Maybe it's harmful for some. Can we modify? Right. Can we like be like, okay, let's be honest about what we've done here and like, maybe modify a little bit. No, right? It's tough to do. Not. It's tough to do, because it, and it's also or, not even an individual doing it, you know? So like right. when we it's get into it, it's thing. like organizations doing yeah. it, and then like it takes so much time for anything in an organization to change, because multiple people in that organization need to realize it, and then push for it, and then convince other people, and then, you know, it's not yeah. just somebody changing their mind or admitting they're wrong. It's no. not an individual doing it. It would have to be like you know, kind of a collective thing yeah. where, like, a lot of people need to be on board and, like, yeah. who's it going to benefit? Well, half of the population, but, <laughs> you know, whose who's, uh, pocketbook is it going to bene benefit? Yeah. All right, let's keep it up. Okay. I mean, without going down the whole road of conspiracy theory, I mean, you look at the same, you know, pharmaceutical companies that produce folic acid... And you look at some of the, um, of you look at some made, of the downsides so of having a synthetic it. form yeah, of a vitamin probably. like folic acid in the diet, and how it's correlated to higher incidences of ADD, ADHD, OCD, manic depression, bipolar. Um, it's correlated to poor gut motility, mood imbalance, anxiety, and because when you put this raw material into the human body, if you can't metabolize it, if you can't methylate it into the usable form. First of all, you now have a deficiency in the form your body needs and an it's excess so in, in the way. nutrient you can't right. process. Right. And this causes things to go haywire. So instead of folate, it's folic acid, folic acid. And what does your body try to do with that? So your body tries to convert folic acid into, eventually into something called methylfolate. There's a few right. steps in between tetrahydrofolate, dihydrofolate, but essentially folic acid and folate which you can find all over the surface of the earth, gets converted into the usable form called methylfolate. Okay, now That's this is one of the mean. most uh, common, util commonly utilized methylated nutrients in the human body. It helps downregulate neurotransmitters. It helps improve the intestinal motility of our gut. Um, it helps degrade thought. It helps to actually break down catecholamines, which are... Mm fight or flight neurotransmitters that can actually stimulate thought. Wait a minute. So methylfolate does that too? Because that's, that's a big that's one. Yeah. We were talking about that because he brought that up, that magnesium is helpful for that as well. So the degradation of catecholamines, we're talking about basically adrenaline, like norepinephrine, dopamine, these are neurotransmitters in your brain 
that are like the fight or flight neurotransmitters. They create this kind of a feeling, increased heart rate, respiratory rate. Right. And when that's flooding, you have to be able to break those down and get them out of there. In order to be able to relax. Yeah. So if it's flooded and you can't break them down because you don't have enough methylfolate or magnesium, like that's maybe you have trouble sleeping. Poor sleep, high anxiety. <laughs> you're more wor worrisome. Just a general yeah. level of anxiety because right. you can't relax, right? Like yeah. It keeps you in that, you know, kind of redlining phase. Yeah. Of course, eventually you're going to tire out. Eventually it's going to wear its course, but it won't happen. You won't be able to shift gears as easily. Right. right. And the ADHD symptoms that he's talking about kind of makes sense that they'd have root in that kind of a thing where you can't break down your catecholamine, as well as what gut motility, gut brain function, uh, some of the other things he was mentioning. This seems important. It does, and it seems like it, and maybe at one glance you might be like, oh, "How could it affect all of those things?" But when you're talking about those catecholamines and dopamine and uh, uh, norepinephrine and whatnot, like yeah. those are those, you know, there's just a group of like, you know, maybe there are like six of those neurotransmitters that like, for the most part, control everything. Right. Right. Like yeah, when yeah. you're talking about those, and then on the so other side, GABA and whatnot. Yeah. Um, That's regulating your whole nervous system. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> right. And it's your nervous system then, yeah. which, you know, that being out of whack is what is leading to these other issues, yeah. right, where, you know, generalized anxiety, poor sleep, uh, yeah, you're not digesting your food, you have stomach issues and whatnot. Yeah. Is folate, so we're talking about folate and methylfolate, folate is in the B vitamin group? That's right. That is the B... I believe it's B9. B12. I was just trying to think of, uh, like, your common kind of sleep and recovery aid. Mm. I can't remember. You're like either. ZMA. Yeah, yeah, what's the that That's magnesium. Zinc, magnesium, and it's one of the beads they typically throw in there. Okay. I want to say it's 12. We could, I don't know, we could check on that. This is if you're interested in taking responsibility for your health. Yes. If you want to know how these things work, you got to educate yourself on, like, You, you can't trust do. a narrative that hasn't seen or worked with you and your body and, like, testing yeah. your levels of this and yeah, whatnot. clearly everyone's different. As an individual, you have to you have to be like the scientist of your own, you know, of your own body, right? Yeah. Like you, you need to. There's nobody who can just be like, oh, this is, you know. You just need to do this. Yeah. You kind of need to feel it out. You need to know it's individual, and that's what he was talking about supplementing for deficiencies, right? So figuring out what your individual what your deficiencies are. If you're half of the population that has this motherfucker gene that can't break these down, like, that would be a good place to start yeah. and, and try, you know, look at. Because then it's, you're going off actual fact-based things and not just like, oh, let me take this, see how I feel, right. maybe feel a little better, cool. Like, that's good, too, and that's part of that exploration process. Yeah. But, like, if you know and if you can find out, like, oh, I do have this gene, so I do process these things poorly, then, like... That's a solid clue of, like, a good place to start to help clear up, you know, a whole host of potential issues. Good job. Keep being responsible for your health because no one else is going to do it as good as you can do it. This episode brought to you by Kula Wellness. Kula Wellness in Port Charlotte, the premier hot yoga studio in southwest Florida. Come take class, uh, feel better about yourself, get the body moving, help all of these issues in your body as well. Movement is medicine. Come do some yoga. Take your first class for free. Mention this podcast. Get your first class free. The homocysteine was the other thing. Yes. So homocysteine levels in your blood tend to increase arterial wall damage which is going to lead to, you know, atherosclerosis and high blood pressure and all, all these metabolic problems. So if you're deficient in turning folic acid into folate, you're going to be deficient in breaking down homocysteine into the theanine. See, all these things play together in the same cycle, and they have all kinds of effects on the body. Hey, I don't know where you can get this test, but if you feel like, you know, you find something where you can get access to that, mm -hmm. like... 
And we're looking into it. If we figure this out, we'll uh, post yeah. another video about it. Right. Because you may have, like, ran your genetics for, like, an Ancestry.com thing or, like, 23andMe to, like, find out about your family and whatnot. They got but you on they file. they have your gene code already. So we're trying to figure out if it's possible to read these genes through something like that. And that would be a cool how-to video to put together if we figure out that that, that, uh, that, that is possible. <laughs> and so... People will go a lifetime eating white bread, white flour, white rice, white pasta, uh, you know, um, breads and cereals of all kinds. And they're reading the label and they're like, wow, it's fortified. It's enriched. But fortified or enriched for 44% of the population means you can't break that, that nutrient down. Yeah. This is why there, there are, there's a lot of evidence that getting folic acid out of the diet has immediate behavioral changes. I mean, if you're a parent and you're listening to this podcast and it's a full contact sport to get your kid in the car to go to school in the morning, look at what you're feeding them. The standard American diet is going to be like a Pop-Tart, a white bagel, a bowl of cereal, right? And all of those are fortified with folic acid. Well, there's a 44% chance your kid can't process that. And you're amping them up in the morning. It can literally be like cocaine for a six-year-old, right? It could make their mind race. So now this kid gets up. I mean, he goes to the breakfast table and he has a pop tart, or he has a white bagel, or he has a bowl of cereal. He dumps all this folic acid in the body, and now his mind starts to ricochet, right? And and combine that with sugar, right? That's the thing. <laughs> like, if you are, you know, if you kind of are on your health journey, you're probably aware, right? All those things that he pointed out: high sugar products. Sugar is bad. We know this. In the past, I would have just, you know, associate that like, yeah, you can't feed a kid just like cereal and pop tarts. And like expect them to not have some sort of a, uh, you know, behavioral uh, issue, right? Yeah, like discomfort. get all amped up and whatnot, yeah. and you're all cracked out on sugar. But there's more to but it. But then to think, food. yeah, this this next layer of that, which is uh, you know, once you start down these paths, there's always more to go. There's always more to go. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't do anything, right? Whatever level you're at and whatever changes you're you're making, and uh, these efforts to learn more is good. Heck yeah. But like. That's wild that that could not just be the sugar, mm -hmm. but then this whole other issue of like the way that you metabolize or don't metabolize folic acid, and then it's on everything. Yeah. Or at least everything that's highly processed. Yeah. And a lot of these foods that are processed like this, like they'll be really upfront with it, fortified with the nine essential vitamins and minerals. Right. <laughs> And it sounds like a good thing. Yeah, because it's like, oh, yeah, I know it's got a lot of sugar in it, but Jimmy's got to eat something in the morning. And at least he's getting his vitamins in. At least in. he's getting his vitamins. It's fortified. Right. Better than if it wasn't fortified. <sighs> but did it have to be fortified? It didn't it, have to. Obviously, for it to be processed and put in this package where it never goes bad, and then, you know, there's more profit because of that, and it's more convenient for everybody, so you can't just stick, like, a fresh piece of lettuce in there and, like, and Jimmy doesn't like lettuce. It's because you've been feeding him Lucky Charms bars. <laughs> Would have liked lettuce if it's all he had. He'd love it. I digress. <laughs> it's like they're taking all the nutrients out of the process. Mm -hmm. And so then... then need to add it back in. No, let's put in... But it's like, I'm going to take... In a fake form. In a manufactured yeah. form, right? Of folic acid <laughs> instead of, you know, folate. I guess there wouldn't be folate in pasta or rice. Well, no, not in the grains, but that's the thing. They just put it in the grains because it's like everyone's going to eat these yeah, grains. Everyone's gonna eat it's the cheap so. thing. Everyone has a staple. So we're going to fortify the staple, like putting fluoride in the water so everyone has the iodine and the salt so everybody gets it. But, like, if you're eating produce and you're eating natural foods, like, you're going to get these. You're going to get the folate. Right. But like in a way that your body can actually manage. Right. But people aren't doing that. They're not willing to push that. They'd rather push the processed food because there's more profit in that. So now we're just going to make it so that it's possible to survive on just the processed food diet by pumping in anything you're not getting because you're not eating vegetables into the dry dog food that we're giving you. And we're going to give it to you like that so that people don't have, like, nerve degeneration. And what was it? Like a... The, the tubule deficit disorder that's the reason why we have to you know, supplement for folic acids like spina bifida yeah. isn't, it's like it's, crazy. A, it's big in uh, just the development of like your neurons and yeah. whatnot is like why folate's uh, huge yeah but that's why important. 
Right, and that's why natural food is important because it's in there. Right. If you're eating that already, then yeah. you should be getting that. And then a form. But then you might be getting too much because you're also eating uh, this stuff, maybe. Yeah, and if you can't break this down, you got problems. But they're just making an effort to make it possible for someone to subsist on fake, processed dog food. It's dog food is what it is. It is. And but it comes from easy. a good place, potentially. All right, I'll give him that. They're, Fine. They had a I good, don't necessarily uh, agree, but I'll give you right. They had a good intention, perhaps. Perhaps. I think part of the intention is so we can just sell you shit in a box around the clocks, and you just eat that, and you can forget about all the land where you can grow produce, because that's not going to be okay. Just eat this, and we're going to spray it with some shit like you're in outer space. Like, I'm going to take your cup, dump the water out, and then piss in it and say, this is rehydrated. Here you go. <laughs> Come on. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry. It's a full contact sport to get them in the car, and then by the time they get to school, this, you know, the call is coming home saying, hey, little Johnny can't pay attention. He doesn't focus. He can't concentrate. He doesn't follow directions. He can't pay attention. Get him on Adderall. Yeah, get him on Adderall or Ritalin. And, you know, essentially what that does is it says, all right, well, if the mind is racing, um then let's put an amphetamine into the body to race the central nervous mm. system to match the pace of the mind. That's good. Which yeah. is a horrible solution. How about we just quiet the mind? Right? Because the you know, it, it, in our brains, we, we don't just create thought. Right? We also dismantle thought. We break thought down. Right? We transfer methyl groups from neurotransmitters and break them down so they no longer have an effect. Right, or else you'd always be in the same mood. So when we start creating thought at a faster rate than we break thought down, we call this ADD or ADHD, Whoa. right? But it's not an attention deficit at all. In, in many of these cases, this, it's an attention yeah. overload disorder. It's too many windows open yeah. at the same time, attention right? So if we're open- I've known people that have like, you know, you identify with, oh, I have ADD, because, like, that's what they told me when I was a kid. Like, you mm -hmm. know people like this, and, like, and I and I get to know them, and I'm like, you you have too much attention. Like, there's no deficit here. <laughs> right. Like, you're able to, fo when you start doing something, you are locked in on that fucking thing. Like, that's a good thing. You should be able to harness that. I don't know. I've noticed that. Yeah. yeah. Thing, but. It's a little hard to speak with not having experienced uh, ADHD, I suppose. Yeah. Like, it is a little hard to say what somebody else is experiencing, so it's like, right. whatever. But, like, it does make sense when he says it, and it's like, yeah. oh, shit. And then you can relate that to people that you do know. It's like, yeah, like, they have, they have too many thoughts. I like that, how we put it, they have, you're creating more thoughts, and then you're breaking them down, and then right. you're in a, like, thought overload. Right. It's, it's like, just like it's almost the same as the folic acid thing. Like, how do you metabolize your thoughts? Right. If you're taking them in. You have to break them down and get rid of them, or else they'll build up and right. create a toxicity. These folders just stay open. Yeah. And it takes up your RAM. Right. And that's a real thing. Like, that's how the mind works, too. That's why meditation is so helpful, right? Because that's closing windows. Right. Yeah, it? yeah, absolutely. A little reboot, a refresh. Right. Close windows. Too many windows. Now all of a sudden we can't pay attention. So and it's not that the majority of people with ADD or ADHD lack the ability to pay attention because they actually can hyperfocus. They lack the ability to pay attention to so many things. Right. So we all break down. You're thinking point, about a job yeah. you're working on, and your friend walks up, and you're thinking about a job, and you start talking to your friend, and you notice a logo on your friend's jacket that reminds you of a vacation you want to take. So you're thinking about a job, talking to your friend, looking at the logo, thinking about a vacation you want to take all at the same time. And why is this? Because very often it's because you have this slow breakdown, slow methylation of neurotransmitters. So thought, thought, thought comes in, and now all of a sudden we're like, this kid can't pay attention. This guy's all over the place. Huh. If you look at the link between that simple gene mutation, MTHFR, and its incidence in... Um, its incidence in uh, stroke, cardiovascular disease, its incidence in um, ADD and ADHD and OCD, you'll find not a direct causal link, but enough of a prevalence to say, why wouldn't we just take folic acid out of the diet, add methylfolate, and take a shot at correcting 
the course of these conditions. That's a big shift to change direction. So, yeah. folic acid, when did it get like introduced an airplane around. into the yeah. human diet? In 1993 is, I think, when the federal government signed a deal to spray our entire grain supply with folic acid. I read it was 98. I want to say it was 1992 oh. or 1993, and I forget if it was Monsanto. I forget the pharmaceutical oh, company man. that convinced They're the U.S. In. government to Get um, out. spray in. our entire grain They're supply. In. But They're in. Don't be day, there. Have you ever noticed when you go to Europe? Not in your best you interest. bread in Europe. You don't feel like shit. Or you, yeah. go to, you go to Italy and you have a bowl of this pasta, cool. and you're like, man, normally when I eat pasta, I feel like shit. It just yeah. sucks. Okay, that's because it's not sprayed with folic acid yeah, i'm really curious i'm like, super curious I'm, that we need to, we need to dig into that i need this gene test we need to do the gene test has anyone done the gene test do you know if you are a non-methylating motherfucker or not like can you methylate can you break down with it have you done it please let us know if you have because that's super interesting really right. because i'd always been told that it's heirloom grains and that our new uh, the wheat that we have today has been modified to, for higher yield for smaller acreage not as more near, complex well, genetically modified first of all you know the gmo foods um you know italy banned gmo foods russia actually it's a felony to grow genetically modified foods um well, so I don't understand that, gmos aside well, and that's another thing I, mean, I tell people you gotta get i just don't i feel like everything i don't know if he's using that as more of a blanket term but like all the food is genetically modified all of it? You sure? Yeah, like, How to so? some extent, whether it's, like, I don't... Is he talking about just if it was done by, like, gene editing tools? Like, I don't know. Is that how they're doing it? But, yeah. like, a banana. Like, that's not what a banana was. Right. At all. So, you mean... Are you counting stuff that was modified just through breeding, basically? I guess, but is that... So, so is that the distinction? Selectively. Like, are they doing it, like, Frankenstein way? Or are well, they that just kind of selective... There's definitely splicing going on. Yeah, and but that's still the sure. splicing. But it's just like combining two different plants to get you know some sort of hybrid. No, not splicing on like the plant level. Splicing on literally the cell level. on the on like literally on the genetic level. Yeah, yeah, like genetically modified. Mm -hmm. They're cutting out DNA sequences, but they're <laughs> taking other DNA codes to put it in there. To make it so that it has a certain new quality. Right. To be able to have a resistance to uh, pesticides, specifically right. glyphosate. Right, right, right. So they can blast Round that. Round up. Kill, yeah. Kill all the pests, but now all of a sudden you don't kill the plant because it's been like right. it's Frankensteined out. out. Okay. And that shit's illegal. So you can't do that in Europe. Yeah. It sounds I mean, like a good idea. Yeah. If he's right about that, I mean, would you question that? No. I haven't researched it, but he says in Russia, it's illegal. In Russia. And a couple other countries. And, yeah. You know what else is illegal in, in like, France? It's, like, fucking Rice Krispie treats. And, like, a couple other things that we just think of as, that's, uh, that's just normal. Uh, but, like, Lucky Charms or some shit, you know? Like, that's kind of weird, though. Well, I guess, like, all the, they probably have a ton of, like, GMO foods in things like that. So then if the GMO's banned, like, that product's banned. That would make sense. But it's weird, like, That's I don't want them to be like, oh, you can't eat these things either. So it creates a weird dynamic. Mm. Well, yeah, because you don't want to regulate the people and be like, you can't do this, you gotta do this, right? That's what you mean? Right. But it's at a corporate level of, like, you right. can't manufacture and sell this shit. Yes. I mean, I feel like that's fair. Like, don't put poison out there that I people don't enough. understand. Yeah. Right? Because then also the problem isn't just that... It's not necessarily like, oh, this plant was genetically modified, so, like, it's bad for me because right. of the gene sequence. No, it's not that. It's... But then they're able to, like, pour this herbicide and pesticide on the plant. Mm -hmm. The plant doesn't die, and then you're eating the plant. So then you're eating the uh, glyphosate yeah. and, you know, whatever else. And then you're getting those pesticides and herbicides and whatnot into your body. I yeah. feel like that's the main issue. It's not that it's the bad. plant itself isn't bad for you. Maybe 100%. it could be in some. No, no, but you're right. It's the ingestion of 
it, these poisons. Lethal right. fucking poison. Like, obviously, it's not a lethal dose. Right. That's another thing. But again, you over up. time. Yeah. Shit builds up, right? Yeah. And with glyphosate, yeah. Cancer? It's definitely a side effect of that. So it's like, come on, like, what are you guys doing? It should be regulated to not hurt your people. Right. If that's what your priority is. And if it isn't, that's how you know that that's not the priority. Right. Like, if they're <laughs> letting this shit go on, like... You know, foods out of your diet. Right, we didn't genetically modify uh, seeds to increase yield. We modified ge- seeds to be resistant to glyphosate, right? They poison and pesticides. But if you go back to the folic acid and seed oils, for that matter, but if you go back to the folic acid theory, if we stop spraying our grains just just for 30 days, don't even stop eating white bread, white flour, white pasta, white rice, um, or grains, if that's what you eat. Um, I don't eat any of those things, but it, but if that's what you eat, don't stop eating them. Just switch to the organic, non fortified non-enriched version and watch what happens to your mood your focus your concentration your short-term recall the depth of your sleep and your waking mind at night but the vast majority of wheat and rice and things that you do buy will have been enriched with folic acid all of it in the united states is unless Unless it's it's organic organic. wow so if someone's buying a sandwich and you're getting it on regular bread, you're just getting a heap of folic acid. Getting a heap you're getting of folic a acid. Bowl of pasta, you're getting a heap of folic acid. Mm-hmm. And bowl of rice that's not organic, heap of folic acid. And your body's like, what the fuck is this? Your body's like, what the fuck? Just, just be it. Pay attention to your mood after you eat high amounts of some of those things. Oh, uh, believe me, I'm very aware. <laughs> <laughs> my, my number one weakness. Yeah. My number one weakness is bread and pasta. Like, so, if I do go off the rails with a diet, like I have a cheat day, that's what I cheat with. Okay. So try try next time you go off the rails eating non-fortified, non-enriched pasta, rice, bread. Well, I have absolutely noticed that when I've gone to Italy. Yeah. 100% notice it. You that's why. pasta, it just seems normal. Yeah, so that's a good way to... Do a little bit of a modification that we can all kind of start right away. Right. And then you can test and see how you feel. And then make your decision from there. Yeah. If you're not, if you don't know if you have that gene or not, if you can't do the test, stuff is expensive, whatever. At least a nice uh, little test to be able to do. Yeah. And then if you find that, okay, I feel fine when I have organic bread... But then when I eat regular, I, like, feel a certain way, and it's, like, something you can determine is pretty true. It's like, okay. Then you kind of you can start to develop a little educated guess that you might not be converting. And try magnesium supplementation before bed, because I know that's one of the things that breaks down the catecholamines. Mm-hmm. So that can help to methylate those. I guess, I don't know if it's methylating, but it's, like, helping Freaking to break down. it down so you yeah. relax. Yeah, fuck it. Let us know. Let us know how it's going with that. Uh, Drop a line. Stay tuned. Subscribe. See more stuff like this. If you like it, let us know if you like it. Let us know if you hate it. Thanks for watching. Yeah.